presented by Seat77.com. As always, Dave Dubai is coming to you live from the Super Plus Seat 77 broadcast studio in the heart of Silicon Valley. Now, Dave Dubai. Good afternoon, North America. I am Dave Dubai, and this is the Dave Dubai Big Show for a Wednesday. Oh boy, producer Buck, have we got a huge show for everybody today. Breaking news out of San Francisco. Colin Kaepernick will remain a 49er. Tiger Woods is pissed off. The NFL Combine is set to begin. (laughs) Robert Griffin III is no longer a Redskin. The story the National Football League doesn't want you to know about And the San Diego Chargers have decided to attempt to stay in San Diego, or have they? All of that and more on today's super big show. Oh my gosh, Producer Buck, so huge show. Um, Send us your emails, North America. (laughs) Info at seat77.com and subscribe to the big iTunes channel when you have a chance. Um, okay, producer Buck. So we're going to start with breaking news. Trent Balky in a press conference just moments ago said the following. Well, I think the, the good thing is we've got two guys that have gone into games and proven they can play. And Colin's done some awful good things through his career. Uh, won some big games for the San Francisco 49ers and expect him to come back. Uh, the, the main focus right now is, is health. You know, getting him healthy, he's doing a good job with his rehab, uh, talking to the medical staff, that seems to be going very well, and uh, just look forward to getting him back and getting him working with this coaching staff. So Colin Kaepernick is back in San Francisco, and, you know, I have to say, I'm not too terribly surprised by this. Look, it's going to cost them basically uh, $11.6 million to keep, to keep Colin Kaepernick. Kaepernick really does fit in well with what Chip Kelly wants to do. Remember, Chip Kelly's offense is actually pretty simple. There's really really only like 10 or 11 plays. So it won't be so difficult for Colin to actually handle the Chip Kelly offense. It's just not a complicated offense. I think it actually matches what Kaepernick uh, can do. So this is a fantastic move by the San Francisco 49ers. It's, it's funny, though, in the soundbite, you know, Trent says, you know, we got two quarterbacks that can play. And I, and I really don't think Blaine Gabbard fits into the Chip Kelly offense as well as uh, Colin Kaepernick does. Now, listen, I have to say, there is one other thing that could happen here in San Francisco, and that is a Robert Griffin III sighting could actually occur. Um, hey, producer Buck, do you have the sound from from Bruce Allen? This is courtesy of uh, the Mighty 1090. Uh, go ahead and play the uh, first cut of the Bruce Allen. Bruce Allen, for those of you that don't know, it's the general manager of the Washington Redskins. Go ahead and play it now. Well, no, wait, but I, I see Robert getting an opportunity with another team. Um, I think he. We've heard from some teams that are that are interested. And uh, I think he's going to have a, a choice of a couple teams that uh, will let him uh, excel in the future. So the worst kept secret in all of the National Football League was confirmed today by Bruce Allen, as he has said, Robert Griffin III won't be back in Washington. Look, I think the way Robert handled himself over this last 12 months, knowing that he wasn't going to play and that he was actually going to sit on the bench, he actually really was a good teammate. Let's play cut number two from Bruce Allen now. Well, from the very beginning, Robert Robert has handled himself as a professional. When we when we first drafted him, all the way through, he's he's been a good teammate and a good guy. I know I know some people on the outside uh, always like to be critical, but uh, his teammates like him, his coaches like him, and he he does have. Uh, some special talents, uh, and we we wish him well. 
So you got to give it to Bruce. Um, he's saying all the right things. Bruce is, is, you know, a really good guy. He is a master, a master of the salary cap. Um, so he's, he's saying all the right things. He's doing all the right things. So far, Robert Griffin III hasn't imploded yet. Look, places that Robert Griffin III could land. <laughs> he could end up in Dallas, which would just be a total circus and a terrible move by the Cowboys. He could end up in Houston. Look, I mean, he's better than Brian Hoyer, that's for sure. But that offense is probably too difficult for Robert Griffin III to learn right away. So I think that the Texans would actually take a couple steps back if they brought Robert Griffin III in and expected him to start. Now, if they could get Robert to actually sit there for a year, <laughs> and trust me, you know, Brian Hoyer is not going to last a year. So if they, could get Brian, if they could get him to just go there and sit there and watch and learn, then they might be in a good spot. But I think, clearly, there are two landing spots for Robert Griffin III. The first is the Los Angeles Rams. <laughs> it feels good to actually say the Los Angeles Rams. I think it's the first time, Producer Buck, I've said the Los Angeles Rams since 1994 when I had a chance to interview Jerome Bettis. <laughs> that's a lot, That's a story for another day. Anyways, um, so he could end up in Los Angeles with the Rams. Um, that would be a very interesting landing spot for Robert Griffin for a wide variety of reasons. The other place, though, that I think makes the most sense is for him to end up in San Francisco with Chip Kelly. Now, with the news today that Colin Kaepernick is back, the odds of that happening just got a little slimmer. But wouldn't it be great, 49er fan, <laughs> to actually sit there and watch Robert Griffin III and Colin Kaepernick push each other during the preseason and during the regular season. I think it would be fantastic television. I would love to see it. Make it happen, Chip. Make it happen. Okay, so moving on. Um, so yesterday we did a, uh, a quick story about Tiger Woods and how we thought Tiger Woods was done and how he probably wouldn't even end up playing on, on the second tour, the, the web.com tour. We called it the nationwide tour because we were having some fun. But the web.com tour, I don't know if you, I got to say this, I don't know if you remember this, but when it was the nationwide tour um, and, and the contract ended, it literally happened overnight. All of the nationwide.com tour stuff went away overnight and it was suddenly the web.com tour. It was amazing. Like the, the victories that you had as a player on that tour <laughs> from like 15 years earlier were from the web.com tour. I mean, seriously, check it out. It's, it's hilarious. Anyway, so um, Tiger Woods responding to all of the criticism uh, yesterday posted the following video. And, and let's go ahead and play the audio of this. This is a 153-yard par-3 simulator. Play it now. <laughs> uh, it's... It's it's uh uh it's it's really amazing. Um, so Tiger, um, you know, he's got a simulator. It's it's in his house, and uh, he hits a shot. And and I will say this, you know, I mean, the swing looked like, you know, it looked good. Um, it was a par three, so you know, it wasn't a driver. <laughs> um, and and it went, you know, he ended up about fifteen to twenty feet away from the cup. The the fact that Tiger Tiger actually felt like. He had to post this um, was an outrage <laughs> for him and his camp. I'm sure of it. Still, I will stand by what I said yesterday about Tiger Woods. I don't think we are going to see Tiger Woods anywhere near a leaderboard in 2016. <laughs> Producer Buck, the closest place he's going to get to a leaderboard is his name on top of a leaderboard for one of the tournaments that he sponsors. <laughs> um, okay, so moving on. Uh, the NFL Combine is getting close to starting. There, there's all these press conferences with all the coaches today, and uh, and some of the top players will will hold uh, a couple of press conferences. This is what I like to call the Spandex Olympics. <laughs> so get ready, North America. We will watch anything that revolves around the National Football League. And the Spandex Olympics actually kick off on Friday. 
So make sure you tune in for the NFL Combine, a.k.a. the Spandex Olympics. Look, North America, we want to hear from you on the Dave DeBall Big Show. Info at Seat77.com. And we are blowing up. Producer Buck wants me to tell you, North America. (laughs) Check us out on the uh, iTunes uh, channel. Uh, We got in trouble for bragging about making it into the top 150 uh, sports podcasts. We are super excited about that here on the Dave DeBall Big Show. Thank you for all your support. Um, Go ahead and post a note. Tell us if you like the show or or if you hate us. We've gotten a lot of hate mail. (laughs) We like the hate mail as well. Um, so um, just a, a, a quick story for everybody Everybody, before we get into our main story of the day. And, and that is the brilliance of Dean Spanos and the San Diego football chargers. The lightning bolts decided to hold the city of San Diego hostage. And this is how they did it. They said to San Diego, they said, look, We don't want a stadium where the old stadium is. We want a stadium in downtown. Build us a stadium in downtown near Petco Field, near the Gaslamp District, and we will stay in San Diego. Put it on the ballot in November and have the citizens vote. This is a win-win, brilliant move by Dean Spanos and the San Diego Chargers to actually get this on the ballot. This holds the city of San Diego hostage. You want to keep the Chargers? Then you simply have to vote for the new downtown stadium. Look, I I had a chance to uh, uh, take a, a little vacation, me and the wifey, and we met we met some uh, some good friends of ours down in San Diego, and we did it. We did a weekend in San Diego. And producer Buck, one of the best parts about this weekend: no kids. <laughs> they didn't bring their kids. We didn't bring our kids. We just we just hung out in San Diego and we spent a lot of time. I mean, a lot of time. I found a very good whiskey bar. <laughs> we 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 spent a lot of time down at Gas Lamp and it's you know, it's near uh Petco. It's it's a great place to put a football stadium. There is a little bit of land there available for this new football stadium to go up. Um I love the fact that Dean Spanos has said, "Look, we're going to L.A. or we're staying in San Diego, but San Diego, we are leaving it up to you. Do you want the Chargers to stay? If you do, then you will vote yes on the referendum in the November election. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant move. Okay, so for our main story of today, for the Dave DeBob Big Show, for a Wednesday, we've got the story that no one wants you to know about. This is a story that the National Football League wants to just simply go away. And I don't know if you saw this um, yesterday in the Wall Street Journal, a great article written by Matthew Futterman. And Matthew went um, wrote an article about how the NFL, um, through a kind of a roundabout tax evasion style move, um, ended up withholding $120 million in revenue uh, from a shared pool um, for the players. Look, the National Football League, yeah, they, they come out and they say they say the following. They say, look, we want to prevent concussions. At the same time, the NFL comes out and they say, well, we want to extend the season to 18 games. It just it makes no sense. The NFL says, okay, we've signed off on a contract with the NFL Players Union, the NFLPA, and Demarius Smith agrees, and they've got the contract, and then the NFL turns around and hides the $120 million in revenue from the NFLPA. So Demarius Smith and the uh, NFLPA went out and they were doing their annual audit of the National Football League, and they uncovered... Um, this 120 million. So then the NFL said, "Screw you," <laughs> to the NFL Players Association and said, "We're not going to pay it back." And then Demarius uh, Demarius Smith did what he was supposed to do, and he took him to court. Um, how is it that none of us had heard about this story until yesterday? Great article, Wall Street Journal. Matthew Futterman. If you have a chance, go ahead and uh, read that article. 
Um, do you have the sound bite? Um, uh, courtesy of, uh, I believe this is the uh, the Mighty 1090. Uh, will you go ahead and play the uh, uh, Demarius Smith soundbite real quick? It's not at $154 million yet. We conservatively are, are working on projections now, and I'll be letting the agents know that uh, when I meet them on Thursday. So that's so what uh, Demarius Smith says. He actually says it could be more than $120 million, you know, with interest. <laughs> it could be up to $154 million that the NFL actually owns, owes to the NFL Players Association. By the way, in arbitration, the NFL lost and is now and now officially owes this money back to the NFL PA. It is the story the National Football League doesn't want you to know about. We are telling you about it today on the Dave DeBaugh Big Show. Hey, listen, I love the National Football League. Producer Buck, as you know, I, I tell my kids every night, dream of the Vikings winning the Super Bowl. Every chance I have, I promote the National Football League. But I will say this, they really, really do a bad job with their public relations. And it goes all the way back to one word, and that word is greed. And the National Football League is all about greed. And by just simply deciding to cook the books, for $120 million, what is the point, National Football League? <laughs> Why would you even do that? Of course you're going to get caught. Of course Demarius Smith and the NFLPA is going to look into your books and find it. Did you really think they wouldn't find it? It's like, uh, it's, it's, un it's just unbelievable uh, that the NFL thought, that they could actually uh, get away with that. Listen, North America, thank you so much for tuning in to the Dave DeBob Big Show for a Wednesday. Um, Producer Buck wants me to remind everybody, info at Seed77.com. We are now on Stitcher as well. Check out the Seed77.com website when you have a chance. A huge update to the site and subscribe to the Big iTunes channel and write some comments, uh, favorable or not favorable. We are happy, <laughs> happy to hear from, from you. For the Dave DeBaugh Big Show and Producer Buck, <laughs> I'm Dave DeBaugh reminding you that not everyone can be a champion, but everyone can act like one, Cam. And good luck, North America. Mm -hmm.